Hi, the SI Meteorologist, Paul Dorian here on Monday, March 11th. Very nice weekend for much of the Mid-Atlantic region. Spring-like temperatures up near 60 degrees or higher in many parts over the weekend. It's still mild today, and it'll stay mild right into tomorrow. But then a strong cold front starts uh, getting us back to reality. It'll get colder on Wednesday and kind of step down even colder on Thursday and Friday as well. And longer term, they'll look like some cold air masses are still left for the mid-Atlantic region during the remainder of March. In fact, before we get to the current forecast in the next few days, let's take a look at the uh, longer range here. First of all, the North Atlantic Oscillation, one of the indexes we monitor here closely at the SIweather.com. When it's negative, it allows for the possibility of cold air masses to come into the central and eastern part of the U.S. And indeed, it is about to maybe reach the neutral line here, but then drop again towards the negative uh, levels here by oh, the mid part of March, latter part of March. So the NAO is signaling possibility of some more cold air. And in fact, the strong cold front gets us back to below normal by the second half of this week. One more map before we get to the current weather situation. Here's the European forecast map for height anomalies in the 7 to 10 day period. And this too indicates reason to believe that winter is not quite over yet. This is the height anomaly for 7 to 10 days out, the, the average over that 7 to 10 day period. Still quite a cold shot here in the eastern part of the country. Cold anomalies here. Notice also the, all these reds up here over places like Greenland. This is really uh, suggestive of a blocking pattern in the upper atmosphere, cold air kind of forced underneath the block into the central and eastern part of the U.S. Quite a trough here, setting up per, perhaps 7 to 10 days out. And in fact, the European model is hinting at quite an interesting coastal-looking storm for the middle part of next week. But that's a long way away. Let's now focus in on the next few days. Well, here's the current surface map, and this cold front right here that cuts through the Midwest all the way down to the Gulf states is probably the biggest story of the week here weather-wise in the eastern part of the country. Much improvement across Colorado. They had a major snowstorm on Saturday. It'll be a, a quite a nice week out in Colorado and up and down the West Coast. It looks like a very nice weather pattern here. But for the eastern states, this cold front will bring... Uh, a decent amount of rain, a soaking rainfall from late tonight through much of tomorrow, and then that'll sweep off the east coast. Colder air moves in kind of in a couple different stages. It'll turn definitely colder on Wednesday, but then even colder another step down for Thursday and Friday. So again, this cold front brings a soaking rain to the mid-Atlantic region uh, basically for the day tomorrow, beginning late tonight, and then colder air returns for the middle and latter part of the week. Here's the current radar loop from the Penn State eWall site. There's some fog and drizzle around southeastern Pennsylvania. It certainly can be a shower anywhere up and down the I-95 corridor later on today into the early part of tonight. Main band of precipitation here in the form of showers will uh, move in for later tonight after midnight and then through much of the day tomorrow. And the rain can certainly come down heavy at times during the day on Tuesday with perhaps three-quarters of an inch to an inch up and down the I-95 corridor as this cold front plows towards the east coast. Here's the latest GOES infrared satellite loop from the SSEC Wisconsin website. Lots of clouds here associated with that strong cold front. Again, it extends all the way from the Ohio Valley down into the Gulf states. Lots of clouds already here in the uh, mid-Atlantic region with some fog. Mostly cloudy skies today, and again, there can be a little drizzle this morning, maybe a shower this afternoon, but the main band of showers should affect D.C., Philly, New York, late tonight, and much of the day tomorrow. Then some clearing moves in for the middle part of the week. Again, a much better pattern setting up for the western states for the remainder of the week. Uh, perhaps a transitional day today uh, across Denver, but then mild weather there Tuesday through Friday, and very nice weather pattern setting up for uh, uh, places like Los Angeles out along the West Coast. Well, let's walk through last night's NAM 0Z model run. We'll go through 12-hour uh, increments beginning this evening, going until Wednesday morning. By this evening, that cold front has moved in into the Ohio Valley, causing a wide area of uh, showers up and down this frontal system. Still relatively dry here in the Mid-Atlantic region, but on the mild side, it'll be mostly cloudy with temperatures approaching 60 degrees again today in much of the Mid-Atlantic region. 
Pretty pleasant weather, again, setting up out behind this front out in the western part of the country. But cold air is driving south and east right behind the front. That moves into the mid-Atlantic region later on this week. Let's now jump ahead 12 hours. Now by tomorrow morning, rain has already moved into much of the mid-Atlantic region as the cold front presses towards the east coast. Here's a cold shot coming in behind it. It is relatively uh, cold air, too. It'll definitely be colder than normal Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in the Mid-Atlantic region. Normal high right now in Philadelphia, for example, is about 50 degrees, and will certainly be below that come Thursday and Friday of this week. So uh, the rain moves in late tonight, continues for much of the day tomorrow. Here's the forecast for map for tomorrow evening. That front now right along the east coast with the rain starting to pull out, start to get some clearing around the D.C. metropolitan region early tomorrow night. And one thing I want to make a, a point of here, Comet Pan, Pan Stars is now visible in the northern hemisphere shortly after sunset in the western sky. So perhaps tomorrow night will be an opportunity, at least maybe in the D.C. region as clearing skies set in, but uh, perhaps a, a little better chance around Wednesday evening. We'll have more on that over the next couple of days. But again, Comet Pan Stars is now uh, uh, available to view for viewing with the naked eye. It'd be better with binoculars or small telescopes in the western sky shortly after sunset. So we'll monitor that over the next couple of nights. And here's the forecast map for Wednesday morning. By then, the cold front is off the coast. There is just a little bit of instability. It certainly can be a shower. Wednesday afternoon into the evening. That could affect viewing conditions for the comet early Wednesday evening. We'll have to monitor that closely on Wednesday. Definitely colder air pouring in here, and it'll be quite chilly by the time Thursday rolls around after this brief spurt of spring fever alert weather here in the Mid-Atlantic region. So that's it for now. For the SIWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.